Well here we are again, another David Cambridge YouTube video build and uh, this one is perhaps a little stranger than the other projects and, and that's really because I, I didn't have any um, clear goal what I was trying to do when I started building this and so it's more of just an amalgamation of different things that I got interested in and, and I used this project as an excuse to try them out and, and put them all together so I kind of wanted to learn how brushless motors work for a little while I, I kind of like the steampunk look and the Nixie tubes, uh, whether this is really steampunk or not, I, I don't really know, but I don't really care too much. And uh, and, and finally I, I wanted to have a go at uh, casting a, a few different aluminium alloys that I would not tried before, so uh, again this was the perfect excuse. So the rest of this video is, is really just the, the build log of, of how the whole thing um, ambled along and, and, and came into reality. Well, if you were paying attention at school, you'll know if you get a coil of wire and put some amps through it and you wrap that round a, a lump of iron, then what you end up with is a magnet and if you switch the current back off, you haven't got a magnet. And that's nothing clever, just school physics. But to, to have a go at turning this into the sort of the, the basic first stab of a, a brushless motor, I've, I've made this thing and it's just drawn in um, Fusion 360 and then I've ran it off the 3D printer. And, uh, and likewise, this is 3D printed. There's a couple of cheap nasty bearings pushed through there and a, and a couple of neodymium magnets either side. So if I get my, my coil and I screw that in there and then this thing I've just um, turned on the lathe and push it through there and that goes through like that so that's free to spin and then next I'll get myself a reed switch so that's just a, a switch that closes itself when it sees a magnet and if I stuff the reed switch through this conveniently placed hole so I'll pull that through like that with it wired in series with the coil and the battery. So, if I now switch the power on, kind of magic happens. And if I faff around with this position of this reed switch, it can, it can kind of play around with the timing and, and get it to run better or worse. And as you might imagine, you can kind of carry on going forever messing around with various different sort of coil and, and magnet configurations but anyway what my plan is for this project is to to move away from this sort of fairly trivial pulse motor configuration and instead I want to learn about these sort of um, brushless motors that you know the type of things that you, you stick in a drone or whatever other purpose you want to do with it. So the grand plan is um, get the 3D printer out and uh, these things you're looking at now. I've, again, I've drawn them in Fusion 360 and and uh, to make a, a prototype of a sort of six coil, one pole pair magnet type uh, arrangement. And uh, if I can get all that going, then, then I'll start cutting metal for real and uh, the idea of making... <laughs> something that potentially looks um, in interesting as, as well as a bit of education for me.
for a bit of prototype work, I've got myself three hall sensors, and they work exactly the same way as the reed switches. They just switch their output when they, they see a change in magnetic field, only they do it electronically. And then I've glued them into the, the 3D print, each 120 degrees apart. So that means when I put my rotor on and the rotor spins, if I look at what's coming out of these wires, I can tell to within 60 degrees the position of this rotor. Right, anyway, let's get this thing assembled. But being able to find your rotor angle from the hall sensors is really only solving one of your problems because you've then got to figure out how you're going to use that information to sensibly drive the, the coils surrounding the rotor so that you end up with this kind of rotating magnetic field effect which the rotor permanent magnets will then just follow round and round. So to have any chance of making this work, you're it, certainly not going to get away with just a, a reed switch and a magnet anymore. So you, you, you need to you know, pick your favourite microcontroller, design some electronics for it so that it can switch the, the field coils on and off. Um, and then it's a, a bit of head scratching for a while to, to come up with a commutation table, which you can then implement it in um, software, switch it all on and, and see what happens. So at this stage you end up with a kind of breadboard prototype and it, it works alright actually but you, you do find that you know someone only has to slam a door in the opposite room and a, and a wire pops out and you, you're tearing your hair out trying to figure out what's gone wrong. So, so what I'd, I'd like to do next really, and, and I do quite enjoy it, is um, lay out a PCP, get that sent off to be professionally made and, and whilst you're waiting for that you can get on with some other part of the project. <laughs> Whilst all that was going on, PCB way of printing my PCBs, so um, now it's from one extreme of precision to the other and I can get on with building them. Now, it goes without saying that I could have just gone out and bought a, a drone speed controller for a, a tenth of the cost and probably a tenth of the size as well, but, but that's kind of missing the point because what I really wanted to do with this was for my own education. So the board's built with a view to um, having all of the components that I want to experiment with as um, three holes so they're easy to swap out. Um, STM32 microcontroller and really just plenty of test points, plenty of areas where I can sort of poke and prod with a, a scope to see what's going on. And in fairness, it's actually working quite well now. And uh, on one hand, I, I could have um, 
just stop the project now, really. But as I say, I, I quite like, I do like this steampunk aesthetic. So in some ways, the rest of the projects are all now off in a different direction. So it's to change this um, motor into something that, that looks steampunk or whatever you want to call it. But and it's also in some ways a bit of a shame because... Um, after I sort of convert everything to metal and brass, then um, eddy currents run riot and uh, efficiency drops off. But I don't have a lot of interest in uh, messing around with motor core laminates and, and everything else. So, so the rest of the project's really just concerned with um, aesthetics at the cost of uh, function and efficiency. hope that the laws of physics weren't going to notice what I was up to and um, unsurprisingly I've not got away with that so eddy currents haven't had a, a stunning effect on motor efficiency so um, I, I, rather than messing around building some sort of laminated core I'm just going to try and put a bit of distance between um, any magnetic fields and any spinning metal um, and that's just a quick redesign of the rotor. And luckily for me, that has actually worked stunningly well. I wanted to build some sort of display just to show how fast the motor's going. And since the project's steampunk and everything steampunk seems as though it has to have Nixie tubes in it, then I might as well jump on the bandwagon. But that does leave me with a bit of a problem because a Nixie tube runs at about 170 volts, whereas a microcontroller works only at about um, 3.3 volts. So, so that means building another prototype circuit, laying it out again, and more PCBs to build. 
Having bought enough Nixie tubes to last a lifetime of projects, I've decided to just try and design one board that I can also use the same thing in a lifetime of projects. So the idea is that a single board, it has on it the inverter needed to power the, the high voltage for the Nixie tube, it has the cathode drivers, and it's got a um, microcontroller on which is in charge of everything. And what happens is you are on the microcontroller, a number comes in, it's divided by 10, and then the, the modulus is, is written to select, is used to select which cathode to light, and what's left gets passed down the serial port to the next device in the chain. And that way, you know, you can have as many tubes in your project as you like, really. So it's not necessarily efficient on um, sort of components and costs, but in terms of my own time of, of building boards and waiting for them to, or designing boards and waiting for them to come back from China, it, it actually works rather well. So for the finishing touches I thought I'd uh, just create a few um, brass plates and, and a bit of etching on them and I thought this would be really easy but it just ended up being the most tedious troublesome part of the project. I'd um, tried to use some old kit I had lying around from um, making PCBs and, and that included some um, ferric chloride that I was going to use for the etching and I think the problem was it was the middle of winter it was freezing cold in a cupboard at the back of the garage and it I couldn't be bothered to get out of the bubble etch tank so it just didn't work and um, I ended up buying some copper sulfate from um, Amazon I think it was and um, just using electrolysis to, to etch and, and that worked all right there's a, a few sort of rough spots but kind of adds to the antiquated look so I ended up being quite happy with the result. Mm -hmm. 